राधा रानी महारानी की जय नगुरो रधिकम तत्वम नगुरो रधिकम तप तत्व परम नास्ति कृपालु गुरवे नम कस्तूरी ललाट पटले वक्षस्थले कौस्तुभम नासाग्रे वरमौक्तिक करतले वेणुकरे कंकण सर्वांगे हरिचंदन सुलित कंठे च मुक्तावली गोपस्त्री परिवेष्टि विजयते गोपाल चूड़ामणि नम कमल Devotional listeners, now I humbly request your full attention, and would you please turn off your cell phone if you have it with you? Thank you. My topic is for this entire week is the Bhagavad Gita and the lessons, life lessons we can learn from the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. What is it? सर्वो सर्वोपनिषदो गावो दोग्धा गोपाल नंदन पार्थो वत्स सुधीर भोक्ता दुग्धम गीता मृत महत भगवत गीता इज द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल द उपनिषद्स दिस वर्स सेस थिंक ऑफ द उपनिषद्स टू बी अ खाओ श्री कृष्ण इज द डिवाइन खाओ हर्ट हु इज मिल्किंग दिस खाओ Parth or Arjun is the calf that is given the milk of this cow to drink, and the milk of the Upanishads is the Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, there is the essence of all the teachings of the Upanishads. The Upanishads are they contain the the most formidable knowledge of the Vedas. they have they give us formidable knowledge pertaining to to god the individual soul and maya there are many upanishads some of them being keno upanishad katho upanishad mundaka upanishad mandukya upanishad brihadaranyaka upanishad taitri upanishad and shweta shrutra upanishad so whether i say the upanishads or the vedas it's the same thing
Bhagavad Gita, when we look at the name, many people who are linguists, they say, why the name Gita? It should be Geet. Geet meaning song. This is the song of Sri Krishna, song of God, Gita. But why Gita and not Geet? Well, Geet meaning song and Geetam, it's in Sanskrit, Geetam, it's in the neutral gender. But the full name is Gita Upanishad. Gita Upanishad is the full name. So the word Gitam or Geet is in the neutral gender, but the word that comes after it is Upanishad, which in Sanskrit is in the feminine gender. So Gita Upanishad or Geet plus Upanishad, Geet meaning, uh, Geet being in the neutral gender and Upanishad being in the feminine gender in Sanskrit, therefore Geet becomes Gita. Bhagavad Gita, there are two characters, as you know very well, Sri Krishna and Arjun. Who wrote the Gita? Many say it's Bhagwan Sri Krishna who wrote it, but he did not. He was driving the chariot for Arjun. He did not write the scripture. Bhagwan Vedavyas recorded the conversation between Bhagwan Sri Krishna and Arjun. And he did so 50 years after the battle was fought. The fierce battle that went on for 18 days, the Mahabharat, the great battle. 50 years passed and then Bhagwan Veda Vyas recorded the, he wrote down, he had it in his mind, but he wrote it down 50 years later. And the 700 verses of the Gita divided into 18 chapters, they form a very small part of a much greater scripture, much longer scripture known as the, Mahab the Mahabharat scripture. Mahabharat scripture contains within it 100,000 verses and Gita has contributed 700 of those. So Gita is the 700 verses from the Mahabharat scripture, but it became a scripture by itself. It's a short little scripture as far as our Vedic scriptures go, but it's a very important scripture. And it has been translated into many languages of the world. And that's a testament to the universal messages that the Gita contains within it. That no matter which religion you call your own, no matter what part of the world you're living in, Bhagavad Gita speaks to every person. It speaks to all humans. So it has gained a lot of popularity. So Sri Krishna, who is he and who is Arjun? Sri Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mattaha parata ramna nyat kinchi dasti dhananjaya Mai sarvam idam protam sutre manigana eva Arjun, none is greater than myself. The entire creation is strung on me like clusters of gems are strung on a string. The entire creation, he says, is strung. He says, strung, it's strung on me just as clusters of gems are strung on a string. He is the Lord of uncountable universes. He's the creator, the protector, and the destroyer of innumerable universes. We do have an idea about who Sri Krishna is. There are so many lords who exist. Brahma, Vishnu, Shankar, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shankar. And there are uncountable Brahma, uncountable Vishnu, uncountable Shankar. Simply because Sankhya Chetra Jasa Masti Na Vishwanam Kadachana Brahma Vishnu Shiva Dinam Tatha Sankhya Na Vidyate 
This verse from Devi Bhagavat Puran says, there are uncountable universes. You can keep on counting. A whole lifetime will pass. Uncountable lifetimes will pass. You can keep on counting the universes, but you will never finish counting them because they are uncountable. So there are uncountable Brahma, Vishnu and Shankar. And then there's one Mahavishnu who is above the uncountable Brahma, Vishnu and Shankar. And then as the Bhagavat Puran says, Sri Krishna is the one whose partial manifestation is Mahavishnu. Vishnur Mahan sa ihayasya kala vishesho Govinda Madi Purusham tamaham bhajami. I bow down to Sri Krishna, whose partial manifestation is Mahavishnu. So there are uncountable lords, but Sri Krishna is the lord of all lords. Krishna Havai Hari Paramo Deva. He is a Paramadev. Kaha Paramo Devaha? The Vedas ask a question, who is the Supreme Lord, the Lord of uncountable lords? Krishna Havai Paramam Daivatam. That would be Sri Krishna. He is a Supreme Lord, the Lord of all lords. Then what about Arjun? Who is he? Shri Krishna says, Virana Maha Arjuna. Of all the valiant warriors, I am Arjun. Arjun is the most valiant warrior and Arjun and Shri Krishna are Nar and Narayan. Nar Narayan, Arjun, Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is representing every man. He's representing the common man. He's representing all of us. But there's nothing ordinary about him. Arjun is asking the questions and Sri Krishna is answering those questions. So, the Gita begins with Arjun saying to Sri Krishna, Arjun is sitting in the chariot. Sri Krishna is driving the chariot, the battlefield, in the battlefield, which is the Kurukshetra. Arjun has said to Sri Krishna, Oh Sri Krishna, take my chariot between the two armies. Sri Krishna has done exactly that. And then suddenly Arjun says, I cannot fight this battle. He says, Gandivam sransate hasta tvachaiva paridahiyate nacha shakno me vasthatum brahmati vacha me manah. O Shri Krishna, my bow, Gandiv, is slipping from my hands. My skin is as if burning. It's, a, it's as if my body is on fire and my mind is reeling with confusion. I cannot even stand steady on my two feet. How will I fight the battle? Arjun's bow is Gandiv. The weapons of the divine ones are also divine by themselves. And they have names. For instance, Sri Krishna is known as Sarangapani. In many Kirtans, we hear that name of Sri Krishna, Sarangapani. Pani meaning hand in Sanskrit. And Sarang is the name of his bow. So Sarangapani means the wielder of the bow, Sarang. Arjun's bow is Gandiv and he is known as Gandiv Dhari, the wielder of the bow, Gandiv. So there is the divine discus, its name is Sudarshan. So they all have names. All the paraphernalia of all the divine ones, whether that be God or saints, they're all divine. For instance, 
द फ्लूट ऑफ श्री कृष्ण इज भगवान शंकर एंड श्री कृष्ण वंस बिकेम द हेयर ऑफ राधा रानी ही एक्चुअली अस्यूम द फॉर्म ऑफ राधा रानी इज हेयर दैट्स वेरी सरप्राइजिंग फॉर अस बट दिस इज द डिवाइन वर्ल्ड वी आर स्पीकिंग ऑफ सो ऑल द वेपन्स हैव a form and they all have names so arjun says i cannot fight this battle and having said so he moves to the back seat of the chariot but you don't fight a battle from the back seat of a chariot it's like trying to drive from the back seat trying trying to drive a car from the back seat you can't do that you cannot be fighting from the back seat but eva muktva arjuna sankhe रथोपस्थ उपाविशत विसृज्य सशरम चापम शोक संविघ्न मानस है स्पोकन द वर्ड्स आर आई कैन नॉट इवन स्टैंड स्टडी ऑन माई टू फीट माई बो गांधी विथ स्लीपिंग फ्रॉम माई हैंड्स हैविंग स्पोकन दीज वर्ड्स देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग अर्जुन डेट वॉज टू गो टू द बैक सीट ऑफ द चेरियट क्लियरली एक्सप्रेसिंग दैट ही इज नॉट गोइंग टू फाइट द बैटल but at the same time and by the way we can all all identify with arjun there are many times in life when we are at the crossroads i don't know what to do i'm confused what should i do arjun is representing every person the common man so he says i don't know what to do karpanya dosho पहत स्वभाव पृछा ताम धर्म सूढ़ चेता यश्चित ब्रूहि ते शिष्यस्तेहम शाधि प्रपन्न हि सज ओ श्री कृष्ण आई डू नॉट नो वट डू बिकॉज आई एम कन्फ्यूज सो विद कन्फ्यूज माइंड यू कैन नेवर टेक द राइट डिशन I don't know what the right course of action for me is. So I beg you to enlighten me. Guide me. I am your fully surrendered disciple and you are my esteemed guru. Shishya steham. I am your shishya, your disciple. Shaadi maam, tvam prapannam. Tell me what to do. I surrender myself fully to you. it's very significant that arjun did not say to shri krishna you are the supreme lord and i am an individual soul i need to find out what to do please tell me because god you see he did not say that because god does not give knowledge directly to anyone god gives his knowledge and his nectar his sweetness everything through the guru so arjun very wisely has said you are my guru and i am your chela i am your disciple he didn't say i am your devotee uh, you are god and i am i am your child i am your i am an individual soul you are the supreme soul because he knows if he if he says this then shri krishna would say well you know arjun yes i am god but you also know that i don't give knowledge directly look um i will give you the name and address of a guru So I'll wait here, and you go ask the guru questions. Arjun said, "No, I will accept him as my guru." So he did. Now Sri Krishna cannot say, "Well, you go ask someone else." He has to answer Arjun's question. What should I do? That's the question. Sri Krishna has to answer this. And another very significant. thing to note over here from what arjun says is he says i am your fully surrendered disciple panna means surrendered and prapanna pannam and prapanna panna surrendered prapanna fully surrendered panna is like we say to god tvam eva mata cha pita tvam eva tvam eva bandhuscha sakhatva meva we say to god you are my only mother my only father you are my only you are my one and only 
or when we say to Bhagwan in words, we surrender ourselves, Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. This is verbal surrender. Or we perform some ceremonies in front of God, before God. We take some water and we take it with our right hand, raise our left hand, recite a mantra and we throw it like this and we recite mantras that a mantra such as, uh, a mantra that means, oh, if my Lord, if I have committed any sin throughout the day, then please let that sin be washed away. So the water represents the washing and we go like this and chalo ho gaya. That's it, I'm done. I have gained freedom. I, I am now, I, I, I am now forgiven that sin. This is verbal surrender and ceremonial surrender. Arjun says, I'm not like that. I'm surrendering myself fully to you. What does that mean? Jagat Guru Tam Shri Kripaluji Maharaj says in Radha Govind Geet, Shri Guru Charano Me Govind Radhe Sir Ko Hi Nahi Man ko bhi jhuka de, sir ko hi nahi, man ko bhi jhuka de. Surrender to the Guru. But don't think that just by bowing your head, placing your head at his lotus feet, means that you have surrendered to him. When you bow your head before your Guru, then think in your mind, I offer you my mind. I will do as you say. I will not think anything about what you've said. Why does he say this? Why did he do that? He's telling me to do this. Like Ratnakar Daku, the dacoit, the murderer, Ratnakar. He was murdering so many people and looting them and that's how he was, he was able to um, make a living out of it. So one day Narada Muni came and said, my good man, what are you doing? Anyway, Narada Muni opened Ratnakar's eyes and Ratnakar felt very contrite. He, he said, Maharaj, I have committed so many sins. How do I beg for forgiveness? How will I be forgiven those sins? What can I do? And Narad Muni said, just utter the name of Ram. Just say Ram, 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 Ram. Ratnakar Daku could not utter the name of Ram. It was as if God was saying, you have committed so many sins that I will not allow you to utter my pure name, my divine name. Naraji did not give up. He said, my good man, just say Mara, Mara, Mara. Because you're used to killing people. And after disposing of a body, you say, oh Mara, oh Mara, oh Mara. He's dead, he's dead. So just keep on chanting Mara, Mara, Mara until I come back. And I think everyone here knows that story and everyone also knows that Ratnakar Daku did exactly that. He just chanted Mara, 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 Mara until his Guru came back. Years and years passed and Ratnakar did not ask, he had not asked his Guru any questions. When Narad Muni said, just chant Mara, Mara, Mara until I come back, Ratnakar Daku, they, he kept, he started doing that. He didn't ask about breaks, he didn't ask about meals, he didn't ask about rest, nothing. He just said, Guruji has spoken, I must obey. And he did that. And that's called Prapannam, full surrender, 100% surrender. When the Guru says something, the disciple, if it is a disciple, the disciple doesn't ask why. Or maybe do you think Guruji could be like this? No, he does not use his buddhi, his intellect, which is faulty. He just goes by what the Guru says, the Divine Guru. So, Arjun says, I am fully surrendered to you. Sri Krishna thinks not fully surrendered yet. Because you see, Arjun was saying, mm, what will happen to society? If I kill all these men on the other side, the Gauravs, their wives will become widows 
and maybe they'll become characterless. Then they will have children. Those children will be born out of wedlock and they'll be illegitimate. And in this way, society will come to ruin. Sri Krishna says, wait, wait, wait. What are you thinking about? What are you saying? You don't worry about that. I'm telling you to do something. But Maharaj, it's my, my duty. This duty, that duty. Sri Krishna said, you're not fully surrendered. You're thinking about so much. So, Sri Arjun says, I am fully surrendered to you. And by the end of the Gita, Arjun is fully surrendered. But Arjun had asked a lot of questions. That how can I do this? How can I shoot arrows at my own elders? The ones who have raised me, the ones in whose laps I have played, and the ones I have learned from. Kripacharya, Dronacharya, Bhishma Pitama, they're all on that side. How can I shoot arrows at them? And Arjun, Sri Krishna has said to Arjun, you'll only be shooting arrows at dead bodies. I've already killed them. You just follow my instruction. So Arjun asks for instruction. He asks for help. And herein lies the first lesson we learned from the Gita. That we are confused. We do not know what to do. So we should have the humility to ask for advice. We should have the humility to accept a divine one as a guru. And we should have the humility to say, I don't know anything. You know everything, you tell me what to do. Mind you, when I say guru, I mean a divine personality. I mean someone who fulfills two conditions. One is Shrotriyam, the other is Brahman Nishtam. Tad Vigyanartham Saguru Meva Bhigachet Samitpani Shrotriyam Brahman Nishtam. Kathopanishad. Here the Vedas say the Guru must fulfill two conditions. One is Shrotriyam, the other is Brahman Nishtam. Shrotriyam meaning he is a theoretical knower of all scriptures. He knows all scriptures, all scriptures, fully, 100%. But we ask, how can anyone know all the scriptures? That is because he has fulfilled the second condition. He is Brahma Nishtu. He has attained God realization. By fully surrendering to God, he has attained all the property of God. When someone surrenders to God fully, then God gives him everything. God says, I shall give you everything because you have accepted me as yours. I shall give you unlimited knowledge. I shall give you immeasurable bliss. The two main things God gives. Unlimited knowledge, immeasurable bliss, happiness that has no end, that no one can take away from you, that keeps on increasing also. So now he is called a guru, sant, saint. He is a true Mahatma. It's very important to, to understand what the true meaning of guru is. Because in Kali Yuga, my Guru Dev used to say, and he never called himself a Guru, by the way, but he, was, he has been accepted by the greatest scholars of Kashi Vidvat Parishad, 500 scholars. They accepted him as Jagat Guru Tam, Pancham Mool Jagat Guru, fifth original Guru of the world, Jagat Guru. And not only that, but of, but of all the preceding Jagat Gurus, four of them, Adi Shankaracharya, Jagat Guru Dimbarka Charya, Jagat Guru Ramanuja Charya, and Jagat Guru Madhva Charya, who lived on earth 700 years ago. 700 years later, Kashi Vidvat Parishad accepted a young man, 34 years of age, as the fifth authentic Jagat Guru, who is not just inherited a seat of Jagat Guru, but who is a genuine Jagat Guru. And then they also said that he is the best of all Jagat Gurus who have graced this earth. So, Pancham Mool Jagat Guru. So Guru is one who 
has attained God realization. He has the same knowledge as God has. Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj knew all the Vedas, but not because he studied them. He never studied the Vedas. He did not have a Guru. But he came to the earth, he came to earth, he graced this earth, already divine. So he was, he was known as, he is known as, he will be known as Jagat Guru Uttam. So a Guru, even if we are not talking about Jagat Guru, just a Guru, one who has attained God realization. Now he has all the knowledge of the scriptures because God has given it to him. So Guru is Shrotriyam and Brahman Nishtam. He has theoretical knowledge and practical experience of God. All the scriptures, all the Vedic scriptures, the Vedas and Vedic scriptures say you need a Guru. From the Vedas to the Ramayana, every scripture has said you need a Guru. Uttishthat, Jagrat, Prapya Varan Nibodhat. Kathupanishad says, O oh humans, awaken. Arise and seek the holy association of a guru so that you may learn about God from him. Tasmad gurum prapadyet jigya sushreya uttamam shabde pare chanishnatam brahman yupasham ashrayam. Bhagavad Puran says the same. In the Gita, Sri Krishna says, Tad vidhi prani patin pariprashne na sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina stattva darshina. Arjun, the one seeking divine knowledge, the one who is seeking divine knowledge must surrender fully to the Guru. Prani patin, again, full surrender. Pariprashnena, he must ask questions. But those questions must be genuine questions, born of an inquisitive and, and humble mind, not of an arrogant mind, not a mind that wishes to test the Guru, but one who wishes to genuinely learn from the Guru. So those questions must be genuine and sevaya, and one must serve the Guru. It's a privilege to serve the Divine One. It is a privilege. So Sri Krishna says is in the Gita and in the Ramayan, Tulsi Das Ji says, and by the way, whatever is in the Ramayan is also, it, it's come, it comes from the Vedas. We accept the Ramayan to be genuine because Bhagwan Sri Ram is writing the Ramayan through Tulsi Das Ji. And this Ramayan is in complete agreement with the Vedas. It is taking the most difficult knowledge of the, sorry, language of the Vedas and Tulsi Dasi simplified it. And he wrote it in Avdhi and uh, languages close to Hindi so that the masses could read it and, and appreciate the divine pastimes of Bhagwan Sri Ram. Of course, there is Ramayan written in Sanskrit as well. There are many versions of the Ramayan. So the Ramayana says, Guru Binu Bhavani Dhi Taraina Koi Javiranchi Sankar Samuhoi. It doesn't matter how great you may be. You may be very, uh, you may be a great scholar. You may be very well read. You may be highly intelligent. It doesn't matter how great you are, but you still need a Guru to teach about God. So from the Vedas to the Ramayana, the Sanatan Dharma scriptures say that you need a Guru. Because God does not give knowledge directly. You can say that God has outsourced this duty to the Guru. I don't want to do this, you do this. Because you see, God says, I don't accept the impure souls. Nirumala janam, nirumala man janam, so mohi pava, mohi kapat khal, chala chedrina bhava, chala chedrina bhava. So Rama, in the Ramayan, Bhagwan says, I don't like a deceptive heart. I don't want 
cleverness. I don't want a scheming mind. I will accept you once you become pure of mind. Once you become pure hearted, I'm there for you. I will accept you fully. So then we ask, how do I become pure hearted? I'm not pure hearted. I say one thing, I mean another. I hide my true feelings. I, I reveal my artificiality and I keep my reality within. So how do I become pure of heart? How can I become worthy of you? God says, I will send my pure representatives to earth. I will send a guru to earth and you will accept him and he will help you. He will, he will help you purify your heart. So the guru takes us by the hand and just as a parent lovingly takes the hand of a child and teaches her how to, how to write A, B, C. Just as a loving parent or a loving teacher teaches a child one, two, three, in exactly the same way, the guru lovingly teaches the disciple. He lovingly teaches anyone who wishes to learn about God. Right from the, from the very basic knowledge, and he goes step by step, and he gives the knowledge of God very methodically. He doesn't give too much knowledge, knowledge that will go above the disciple's head. He gives enough knowledge, knowledge which is enough for the disciple to attain God. Jagat Guru Tam Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, Sri Maharaji, he used to tell us many stories and one of the stories he told us was that he was once giving a lecture somewhere where half the public listening were completely unfamiliar with the scriptures. And so many of them, amongst them, were great scholars. So gauging all this, Sri Maharaj said, I thought, I will quote from the Vedas and I will speak about the Vedas, but then the scholars would be very happy. But the rest of the public will say, what did he say? And if I speak only on that Ramayan, the scholars will say, Badi, bada suna tha, jagat guru uttam hai. And abbas Ramayan hi bol gai bas. He only speaks the Ramayan and he's, he's a fifth jagat guru and jagat guru uttam. We had come with high hopes. So it was necessary to speak from the Vedas and the Ramayan. And in a way that only um, a saint can do, he spoke from both and satisfied everyone in, in the audience. So if the disciple doesn't know anything about the scriptures, and how many people really know anything about the scriptures? We may think we know, but we really don't because it's not our fault. Every scripture says, don't read me by yourself. You will not be able to understand me. Even the Ramayana says this. Je shraddha sambal rahit nahi santan ko saath tin kaha manas agam ati jinahi na priya raghunath If you don't have full faith in Bhagwan Shri Ram, Raghunath Ji, and if you are not guided by a guru, then if you don't have complete faith and complete love for Bhagwan, in Bhagwan Shri Ram, then do not read this Ram Charit Manas. Do not read this Ramayana of mine. Do not read the scripture. But to speak then of the Vedas and the Purans and the Bhagavad Gita. So every scripture has a built-in clause. Do not read me unless you're guided by a guru. So it's not our fault that we cannot understand the Vedas and Vedic scriptures. It's because we don't have a divine mind. And the composers of these scriptures are all divine. So in order to understand a granth, a scripture, we need to have an intellect which is um, equal to the intellect of the one who wrote the scripture. So Tulsi Das Ji has also said, Shruti Puran Bahu Kahevu Upai Chutahina Adhik Adhik Arujhai The more you go into the dense jungle called the scriptures, the more entangled you will become. In other words, the more confused you'll become. The more you read the scriptures, 
the more confused you will be. So Bhagwan Shri Krishna says, Tad vidhya pranipatena pariprashlena sevaya. So you, Arjun, you must approach a guru, surrender to him fully, ask him genuine questions so that there may be no doubts left in the mind. If there are doubts left in the mind, then sanshayatma vinashyati. Bhagavad Gita says, the one with doubts in his mind will surely fall on the spiritual path. It's not a possibility. That's a sure thing. He will not be able to go further because he has so many doubts. So ask the Guru questions. You'll get the answers. And serve the Guru in every way possible. That would be a, a privilege for you, Sri Krishna says in the Gita. So Arjun is asking Sri Krishna, I am confused. I don't know what to do. Should I fight the battle? My mind says you should not. I should not. And you're saying I should fight the battle. Please tell me what to do. So the first lesson we learn is that we need guidance. We have been under the control of Maya since the time when even the concept of time did not exist. Aksharat Sanjayate Kalaha. The time concept of time begins when creation comes into being. We have been under the control of Maya since beginning this time. People ask, we ask, when did Maya grab hold of me? I mean, I belong to God. The individual soul is a part and parcel of God. We all know that. Ansho nana vyapadeshat, says Brahma Sutra. In the, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, every individual soul is an eternal part and parcel of myself. We are all his part and parcel. We all belong to him. So how did I become separated from him? How did Maya gain hold of me? How, when did Maya enslave me? So the answer to that is, there was never a time when we were not controlled by Maya. Because, you see, if we were ever with God, we could never have turned away from God. If we were ever with God, we could never have turned away from God because once you attain God, Maya cannot control you ever. So we don't talk about going back to God. We talk about going to God. We were never with him, although we belonged to him, yet we were always with Maya. Always being under the control of Maya because there was an eternal choice before us. God or Maya. And we went towards Maya, embraced Maya and said, I choose Maya. It's an eternal choice. It was not a choice we made one day. It's an eternal choice. So we have always been in the dark. We've always had these glasses, you can say, these glasses on. These are the glasses of Maya. And you know when you have um, blue colored glasses on, everything looks blue. You have red colored glasses on, everything looks red. We have Maya colored glass, Maya glasses on, so everything and everyone looks like this is under the control of Maya. He's under the control of Maya. She's under the control of Maya. Even when God comes, the saints come, we say they're all under the control of Maya. We have always been in utter darkness. So the Vedas say, Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya. O Lord, lead me from darkness to light. Maya is andhakar. Maya is utter darkness. Shri Krishna is like the Surya, the, the very bright sunlight. Krishna Churja Sam Maya Hoy Andhakar says Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So how do we come from darkness to light? We need an enlightened one. Guru is the one who was once like us. There are different categories of gurus. Broadly, there are two. One is Sadhan Siddha Mahapurush, the other is Nitya Siddha Mahapurush. Sadhan Siddha Mahapuru should be someone like Tulsi Das Ji, Sur Das Ji, Mirabai. They were once like us. But by surrendering to God, they became 
perfect beings. So now after attaining God realization, they are now qualified as being, they're now called Guru, Sant, Saint, Mahapurush. They did sadhana, they practiced devotion and they became perfect. But then there are very rare ones who are called Nitya Siddh. They were eternally liberated, never having been under the control of Maya. But regardless, we need a Guru, the enlightened one. Whether he was eternally enlightened or one day became enlightened, now he's enlightened, right? So we need the enlightened Guru to show us the path, to show us the way. Where should we go? Where should I go? How do I do this? How do I manage? In life, there are so many times when we think, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. And Arjun is, he's manifesting that doubt. He's manifesting that, that situation that all of us find ourselves in many times. So the very first lesson we learn from the Bhagavad Gita is that we need a guide. Guru is the teacher of the highest caliber. We have so many teachers in the world teaching us so many subjects. The highest subject is God. So therefore the highest teacher, the greatest of all teachers is the Guru. A follow-up question comes, how do I recognize a Guru? This question was asked of Swami Vivekananda and he gave a brilliant answer. And I'm just paraphrasing him. I don't want to misquote him. He said, how do you recognize a Guru? When the sun appears in the sky, you don't have to be told that the sun has appeared in, on the horizon. You know, you, you instinctively feel that there's sun is up there. Sun has, sun has risen. You already know. You know automatically. No one has to tell you. So when a teacher of men comes to earth, when a guru descends to earth, the seeking soul will know by listening to the guru. And there's this instinctive, intuitive feeling also that, oh, this is a great one. This personality, this I think is a guru. But then you listen to the guru. You listen to his teachings and you come to know, God will let you know, that's a guru. So the seeking heart comes to know that that is a guru. When you hear philosophy that is irrefutable, you cannot say, no, 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 this is not a philosophy, which makes perfect sense. A philosophy, the teachings that are helping you go closer and closer to God. A philosophy that helps you surrender to God to and helps you to live a life, a balanced life, where you are living as a householder externally, but living as a sannyasi internally. This is what the gopis did. The gopis were all householders. Most of them were householders. Most of them were married. And they had household duties to perform. They had so many chores. But they were all Devotees from the inside. Yadohane vahanane mathano pale papreen king kanar bharudito shana marjanado gayanti china manurata dio shukantyo dhanya brajastriya urukrama chitta yana bhagavatam. Whether the gopi is cleaning the house or preparing a meal for her family, or pacifying her crying child, or fetching water from the Yamuna River for daily consumption and usage, the gopi is always in the thoughts of Sri Krishna. She is always chanting from within, Radhe Govind, Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe, Radhe Govind. She is always practicing devotion internally. It is said that when Arjun was sleeping, you could hear the names of Sri Krishna being chanted, each and every strand of his hair was chanting the name of Sri Krishna. He's fighting a battle and Sri Krishna is saying, think of me at all times. 
as you fight the battle. So Sri Krishna is being accepted as a guru by Arjun. And Arjun has so much faith in him. That's the next step. Have full faith in the guru. Once the guru has proven himself to you, don't have doubts. Have faith in him. Bhishma Pitama said, before sundown tomorrow, I will have killed Arjun. That is my vow. And Bhishma is known to take vows that he fulfills. He's not someone who goes back on his word. His name is Bhishma because of that. He takes very serious vows and he fulfills them. So Sri Krishna was very worried about Arjun. And when night time came, Sri Krishna could not sleep. In his tent, he was trying to sleep. He was tossing and turning. And in the middle of the night, he thought, I should go and console Arjun. If I am feeling so worried, I cannot imagine what Arjun must be going through. So he went to, he walked on over to Arjun's tent and from outside he heard loud snoring sounds. And he thought, Arjun is sleeping? He went inside, Arjun is sleeping. Sri Krishna had to shake him, Arjun, Arjun. And after some time Arjun opened his eyes and he saw Sri Krishna before him and he rubbed his eyes and he said, Maharaj, you are here? At this time of the night, you're not sleeping? Sri Krishna asked, how is it that you're sleeping? Do you not know about the terrible vow that Bhishma has taken? Oh, yes, I know. You are not worried? No. How is it that you're not worried? Maharaj, look at you. You're so worried for me. <laughs> Why do I need to worry about myself? I know that whatever will happen will be your grace. I have full faith in you. I'm not worried because I look at you and you are so concerned for me. That's faith. So Guru is absolutely necessary. The faith in the Guru is also absolutely necessary. It's like it's like eyes, eyesight and light. In order to see, you need both light and eyesight. You're in a pitch dark room and you can't see a thing. That's not because you're blind, it's because there's no light. You turn on the light, switch on the light, oh, now I can see. There's a very, or on the other hand, there is a well lit room and there's a fellow there, he cannot see anything. Why? Because he's blind. So you need both eyesight as well as light in order to see in a battle, old time battle, you needed both sword and shield. Sword to attack the enemy, shield to protect yourself. In the same way, you need a guru and faith in the guru. You need both. yadi guru milahi viranchi sam phulahi the Ramayan says, the fool who is bereft of faith will not derive any benefit from even the greatest of all gurus. Even if Viranchi, Brahma, the creator Brahma, comes down to earth in the form of a guru, the fool who is bereft of faith will not gain any benefit. So we need guru and faith. And we see from the Bhagavad Gita that Arjun accepts Sri Krishna as his guru and he comes to have that full faith in Sri Krishna so that by the end of the Gita, he has no problem fighting the battle. He had problems before. He was thinking about his duty towards his elders. He said, my cousins are on the other side. Will I be killing them? I don't want to kill them. Because I don't desire a kingdom. I do not desire wealth. I do not desire pleasures of the world. And of what use would those be for me if everyone for whom I may desire them are, is dead already? I don't want to kill them. And Sri Krishna says, Sri Krishna explained, and I know it's the first day, I'm not going to talk about the last day, but eventually, Arjun, surrenders to Sri Krishna completely, 100%. And that is the first lesson we learn from the Bhagavad Gita, 
that we should not be arrogant enough to think that we can solve every problem for by ourselves, that we can know God by ourselves. We need a guru, a divine teacher, to guide us lovingly by the hand, lovingly and patiently by the hand, and that is what the guru does. Arjun accepts the Supreme Lord Krishna as his guru because he knows that God does not give his knowledge directly. He gives it through the guru, via guru. And he knows that he must have full faith in his guru. So that when Sri Krishna says, fight the battle, Arjun will say, yes, I'm ready to fight the battle. So guru and full faith in the guru. Many times I'm asked in my life, how is it that you are able to do what you do? Did you read all those scriptures? How many years did you study them? How are you able to speak about these scriptures? And my answer is always the same. I'm able to do what I'm, what I'm doing only because of two things. One is that Guru is genuine, my Guru is genuine. Secondly, I have genuine faith in my Guru. I chose to have faith in him. And so without the Guru, without the Guru's instruction, go and, and preach. No one can, no one can preach without the Guru's instruction, without the Guru enabling the disciple to do this. But the Guru could be so great. And if you have doubts, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. And I'll tell you a little bit personally, on a personal note, that I did not think that I could ever give lectures to anyone, not even to a, one or two people, one person or two people, uh, not even to a just very small, um, maybe 10 people. I could not do it. No, not even in front of one. So then I thought, well, my Guru is giving me the seva. So he will enable me to perform this seva. And, and this is what has happened. I've been preaching since uh, 1987. And right from the first lecture, I have felt that. From the time I did Guru Vandana, there are many shlokas such as uh, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Right from that time, I knew I would be okay. So you need a guru. And I just put in this personal tidbit to make it um, make it um, more understandable that this here is someone who went, went through this, who goes through this, that you need a guru and you need full faith in the guru and then magic happens. Then there is no stopping you. So from the Bhagavad Gita, this is the very first lesson that we learn. There are many more lessons we need to learn and I look forward to, uh, to um, telling you more tomorrow, sharing with you more and more tomorrow and in the subsequent days. Boliye Vrindavan Bihari Lal ki Jai Srimad Sadguru Sarkari ki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe